7. The P-38 Recovery at Solomon It was June 5, 1944, when 28-year-old U.S. Army Air Force's Major Peyton S. Mathis Jr. died while flying a P-38J Lightning fighter plane over Guadalcanal. At the time, Mattis Jr. was leading a bombing mission against some Japanese gun positions in the northern Solomon Islands. But Mattis's P-38 ran into problems when the right engine of his twin-engine fighter began to malfunction. The mission was cooled off, and the planes were asked to return to Kukum Airfield on Guadalcanal. That's when Mattis Jr.'s plane crashed, resulting in his death. Crews tried to get into the wreckage that day, but it was a dense swamp, and their rescue attempts were unsuccessful. It was known that the plane had crashed, but what had happened to Mattis Jr.? Mattis Jr. graduated from Vanderbilt University with a degree in chemical engineering. And during his time with the school, he played on the football team. Mattis had volunteered as an aviation cadet in 1940 and eventually earned the rank of lieutenant. He served in Europe and North Africa, where he was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross and Silver Star. Mattis Jr. was then promoted to Major, where he commanded the 44th Fighter Squadron in the Pacific Theater. His plane was rediscovered in 2013, and so were his remains. Mattis's body was then transported to his home state of Alabama, where he was given a proper funeral and was buried with full military honors. The Lockheed P-38 Lightning was conceived by Clarence Kelly Johnson in 1936, and construction work began the following year. The plane had an interesting design, featuring a twin boom configuration. The pilot was located in a central pond with the armaments. The P-38 saw action in the Pacific Theater strategy in April 1942. Some of them did reconnaissance work, while others did combat missions over places like New Guinea. 6. The HMS Triumph Kostas Thogtoraides is a diver from Greece with a knack for finding sunken ships. And it was the summer of 2023 when Thogtorides announced that he had located the wreckage of the HMS Triumph, a British submarine that went missing in the Aegean Sea, which is situated between Greece and Turkey. The submarine measured 276 feet in length and was launched in 1938. The HMS Triumph had gone on 20 missions before its eventual sinking played a role in attacks targeting German and Italian ships, landed British commandos for missions, and rescued Allied soldiers. But the Triumph went missing in 1942 during a mission. And there were over 60 men on board the ship at the time. An Italian pilot claimed that he last saw the submarine near Athens, Greece. So, what exactly happened to the HMS Triumph? Kostas Thogtorides examined the wreckage and determined that a powerful explosion sunk the ship while it was submerged. Thogtorides discovered the HMS Triumph some 670 feet underwater and said that the mission was the most difficult it ever undertaken in his life. And although the ship's been located, the exact location of the HMS Triumph hasn't been revealed out of respect for those who lost their lives on the submarine in January 1942. 5. Mississippi Missing It was November 1942 when Private Andrew Ladner, a soldier in the U.S. Army, disappeared during a battle in New Guinea. He was assigned to the 126th Infantry Regiment, 32nd Infantry Division. And around the same time that he vanished, Ladner and his fellow soldiers were fighting Japanese forces near the port town of Buna in New Guinea. Ladner and his fellow soldiers were to cut off Japanese supply lines, but at some point, Ladner was killed in combat. His remains were found one year later, and he was buried at a temporary U.S. cemetery in New Guinea. However, Ladner's fate was unknown to his family back in Mississippi. When Ladner's remains were found, they were listed as unidentified. Those remains from the temporary cemetery were then sent to another cemetery in the Philippines. To Ladner's family, his status was missing. They had absolutely no idea what had happened to him while in combat. By 1950, it was reported that he'd died, but his family was still trying to locate his body. But it wasn't for another 66 years in 2016 that his remains were exhumed and testing began to identify Ladner. It was reported in 2021 that Ladner had been positively identified, finally giving his living relatives some overdue closure. 4. The Fate of Flight 19 
A routine training flight took place on December 5, 1945 in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Five TBM Avenger torpedo bombers departed from the Naval Air Station, and they were to take part in a three-hour training exercise known as Navigation Problem No. 1. During the mission, they were to follow a flight path and at some point successfully drop their torpedoes. The five planes were known as Flight 19, and their tail is a mystery for the ages. Flight path was triangular in shape, and the five planes were to pass over the infamous Bermuda Triangle, a section of the North Atlantic Ocean where planes and ships have disappeared without a trace for years. This area is about the size of the state of Alaska, around 500,000 square miles. The training mission was going smoothly for Flight 19, but everything quickly turned into chaos. The lead pilot for the mission discovered that his compass wasn't working. Plus, the weather conditions had become difficult with rain, wind, and heavy cloud cover. A pilot would then radio the base with the following message, I don't know where we are. We must have got lost after that last turn. All five planes were way off course, so the flight leader made the decision to fly northeast, which would have taken them over the middle of nowhere in the Atlantic. They should have tried flying west and perhaps they would have made it to Florida. Aircraft were sent out to search for the missing Flight 19 planes, and one of the aircraft on the search mission apparently exploded and crashed into the ocean. It was yet another tragedy on a rather difficult day. 300 boats and aircraft were sent out to find Flight 19. They searched 300,000 square miles, and unfortunately, they found nothing. Navy Lieutenant Dave White went on record and said they just vanished. He explained that they had hundreds of planes out searching for Flight 19, and that they covered a vast area over land and water for multiple days, but nobody ever located the bodies or any debris. There have been attempts since World War II to find Flight 19, and the discovery was made in 1991 off the Fort Lauderdale coast. Plane wreckage was found, but sadly, it wasn't connected to Flight 19. Recently, a group claimed to have found a debris field in the ocean, and they believe it could be linked to the famous Flight 19. But to this day, the debris that was found hasn't been linked to the missing group of TBM Avenger torpedo bombers. This mystery has fascinated and frustrated many, but hopefully, with the advancements in technology, Flight 19 will be located and returned to the surface, where the planes will likely be put on display. What's your favorite book about World War II? Let us know in the comments below, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. 3. The Indianapolis Crew the USS Indianapolis was a warship used by the United States Navy during World War II. Built in Camden, New Jersey, the USS Indianapolis was launched in 1931. It was 610 feet long, and it was armed with 8-inch guns and 5-inch anti-aircraft guns. Used in the Pacific Theater, the USS Indianapolis became the flagship of the US Fifth Fleet in 1943. The warship was involved in the 1945 bombardment of Iwo Jima, a Japanese island of critical importance. Control of Iwo Jima put the US and Allied forces some 750 miles from Japan. And that's when B-29 bombers were sent to the island so they could begin a bombing campaign in Japan. The first nuclear weapon was successfully detonated in July of 1945 in the New Mexico desert in Los Alamos. Then, later that month, the USS Indianapolis was ordered to sail to San Francisco to pick up cargo. Captain Charles B. McVeigh III was the commanding officer for this voyage, and had been the commander of the ship since November 1944. It's unknown who on the USS Indianapolis knew what was in the cargo, but it was parts for an atomic bomb. From San Francisco, the USS Indianapolis sailed to the island of Tinian which is situated north of Guam. The atomic bomb parts would be assembled on Tinian and would become the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima in August of 1945. From Tinian, the USS Indianapolis sailed west to the Lake Gulf in the Philippines. The trip would cover an estimated 1,300 miles, and the ship was sent to arrive on July 31st. The plan was for the Indianapolis and crew to join up with the fleet at Lake Gulf to prepare for an invasion of Japan. 
Some 1,196 people were on the USS Indianapolis, and the trip wouldn't be an easy one as Captain McVeigh was ordered to sail a zigzag pattern to avoid Japanese submarines. This was likely due to the fact that the USS Indianapolis wasn't equipped with sonar to detect submarines. Also, a request had been submitted for an escort ship, but it was denied. Some who've studied this case believe that McVeigh followed the zigzag rule but didn't follow the orders to their fullest. Some also state that McVeigh didn't see any submarine threats to a ship since their mission was top secret. The USS Indianapolis was halfway to the Lake Gulf when sometime around 10.30 p.m. on July 29, 1945, a Japanese submarine, the I-58, attacked. Under the command of Iko Hashimoto, the submarine measured a whopping 300 feet long. Three to six torpedoes were reportedly fired, but only two of them struck the USS Indianapolis. One torpedo damaged the ship's bow when it hit an area of the vessel with fuel containers. The second torpedo was a direct hit in an area known as the powder magazine, a section of the ship where gunpowder was kept. And as a result, smoke and fire engulfed the ship as water rushed in. The USS Indianapolis was seriously damaged and the crew had mere minutes to evacuate. McVeigh reportedly told the ship's navigator to radio for help, but the torpedoes took out the ship's power, rendering the radios useless. An order was then made to abandon the ship. McVeigh remembered that the vessel rolled over to a full 90 degrees, and then everything became a chaotic mess. Those who survived the two torpedoes were now caught in a living nightmare. Life vests were worn by some of the sailors in the water, while others were lucky enough to be in life rafts. Those without life vests struggled in the mighty waters. Debris from the ship was clung to by survivors, as it was all they had to stay afloat in the Pacific. And some of the men in the water were injured, burnt, and bleeding. Then, unfortunately, the explosion from the USS Indianapolis and the blood in the water caught the attention of sharks in the vicinity. The USS Indianapolis wasn't reported overdue for some 54 hours. It's believed that due to the secretive nature of the USS Indianapolis mission, it took the Navy that long to launch a search for the ship. The men were found by accident when a Navy aircraft on a patrol mission spotted the men in the water. The amphibious aircraft, a PBY Catalina, dropped rafts to survivors. The captain and crew also decided to attempt an unbelievable rescue by landing their plane on the water. They landed on the rough and treacherous waters of the Pacific, and amazingly, they managed to rescue some of the surviving men. Some of them even held onto the wings of the plane with parachute cords to survive. Miraculously, an estimated 56 men from the USS Indianapolis were saved by the plane. A destroyer called the USS Cecil Doyle was one of the many ships that were sent out to rescue the men. Some 320 survived the ordeal. But four men died in hospitals following the incident, moving the total to 316 survivors. A difficult task for the Navy was to get the correct list of those who died and those who survived the ship sinking. It was 2018 when the Navy announced that the number of survivors was 316 and not 317. The issue involved the name of Clarence William Donner. He was listed as a surviving member of the Indianapolis, but he wasn't on the ship when it was attacked. In reality, Donner survived the war and was discharged in 1946. 2. The Albacore Mystery The wreckage of a submarine was found off the coast of Japan in 2022. The remains were examined, and they were confirmed to belong to the USS Albacore. The USS Albacore was a submarine that disappeared off the coast of Japan on November 7, 1944. The ship was reported overdue when it failed to return to base. The mystery haunted many for decades, but now the secrets of the ship's final moments could finally be revealed. The USS Albacore had a crew of 85 men when it went missing. It was commissioned in 1942 and was considered a star for the US Navy. It measured a hefty 311 feet in length. It was responsible for sinking at least 10 enemy ships during the war, and it was labeled as one of the best at getting the job done. 
The victories led to the USS Albacore receiving nine battle stars and four presidential unit citations. Sometime on or before November 7, 1944, the USS Albacore hit an enemy mine while submerged. The damage caused the submarine to sink, taking all 85 men with it to a watery grave. The submarine and crew were listed missing for many years, and families of the victims were distraught because nothing was on file concerning the fate of the men. Recently, though, the submarine was identified by a Japanese research group. The families of the 85 men who went missing were notified, and at the time of this video, some 76 living relatives of the 85 men have been contacted. The US Navy released a statement after the discovery of the USS Albacore. They explained that the wreck site represents the sailors' final resting place and that these men gave their lives in defense of their nation. The Navy also said that the site should be respected by all parties as a war grave. The Albacore was one of 52 submarines that was lost during World War II, and at the moment, various research groups are working to make sure all 52 of them are located. 1. The Fate of the USS Greyback Another US Navy submarine that was lost during World War II was the USS Greyback. It went out for a mission on January 28, 1944, but the submarine and a crew of 80 men were missing by March of that same year, and the fate of this submarine wouldn't be uncovered until some 75 years later. Launched in 1941, the USS Greyback was one of the most successful submarines that was used by the US Navy during World War II. It was 307 feet in length and was directly responsible for the sinking of 14 ships. The USS Greyback was sent on its 10th war patrol in late January 1944. It set sail from Pearl Harbor to patrol the East China Sea. A communication was received from the USS Greyback in February 1944. They reported that they had sunk two Japanese Army cargo ships, but there were only two torpedoes remaining, so it was ordered back to dock. The following reports would be the last that were ever received from the USS Greyback. The submarine reported in late February 1944 that it was damaged by enemy aircraft but they also reported that they'd sunk a Japanese naval transport. Then, after that, no other messages were received. The plan was for the USS Greyback to reach the Midway Islands, but the sub never arrived. Records existed from the Japanese military about the sinking of the USS Greyback. Coordinates were recorded, and they were reviewed in 1949. Researchers had an idea where the submarine was located in the Pacific. However, the data was incorrect and the mistake was discovered in 2018. And unfortunately, the error changed the location of the Greyback by hundreds of miles. When research crews finally checked down the wreckage, they noticed that a bomb had been the culprit. In 1944, the Greyback was hit by an enemy explosive, injuring the submarine's hull and eventually leading to its sinking. What mysteries from World War II or the Vietnam War would you like for us to cover in upcoming videos? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.